have created a Fibonacci neural network, meaning it is purely based off of a Fibonacci sequence graph. That's literally uh, the entirety of the neural network. I, I weight the graph uh, and then add weights to it, add uh, like uh, gradient descent to it, and it works. So uh, kind of, uh, I'll, I'll show you kind of the full experiment here and the thought process, right? And so thought process starting off with this is very simple. When you start off with um, HDC or hyperdimensional computing, essentially, uh, I think a lot of people overcomplicate what this concept is, right? It's a very simple concept overall. You're just taking um, a, a, a hyper vector, number of vectors, like a hyper number of vectors, so a large amount of vectors, and a vector is just like um, 1.0, 1.5. We, we generally are, uh, we normalize the vectors between 1 and 0 normal, typically, right? So your typical vector will be like 1.0, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 0 0.3, etc. Right, um, and then we have in a hypervector, let's say, a thousand of these. So it'll be like 1.0, 0.8, 0.5, 0.3, 0.4, etc. On out for a thousand rows or ten thousand, right? And it's a, so that's a hypervector. Um, and then essentially, just by by doing that, by essentially like. Uh, putting, uh, like, rolling, essentially, like, data, uh, like a data set over uh, this large number of weights, like, that, like vectors, uh, you can, like, tease something out of it, right? You can tease um, patterns out of it, and that's, so then the hypervector can make a prediction. And then, so, uh, it's all just boils down to shape and compression to me and my mind. And then, so that's my theory one. Three two, uh, is that this all boil like why that works like like just you know how you're able to, like why hypervectors themselves work it, it's uh, complexity theory right it's it, it's a if you um, have a complex enough system and, and a, a complex enough series of <clears throat> systems then they will compute um, and they'll they'll generate compute and and I think that um, overall that's kind of how compute functions, right? It's, it's via complexity theory in and of itself. And then so this is just a flat out test of that. If complexity theory is true, then I should be able to take something like the Fibonacci sequence and turn it into a neural network. It should just work, right? <laughs> because it should just work for the same reason that hyperdimensional computing works and HTC works. Like, why does it work? That, you know, <laughs> uh, get, get, you know, so let's uh, go ahead and, and um, dive specifically into the Fibonacci neural network here. So overview of this, the traditional deep learning architectures rely on structured layers and predefined connectivity patterns to process information. However, biological systems often exhibit self-organizing recursive structures hinting at alternative computation paradigms. In this research, we propose and evaluate a Fibonacci neural network, or we're calling it an FNN, a novel deep learning architecture where neuron connections are structured according to the Fibonacci sequence instead of traditional fully connected layers. We hypothesize that this recursive structure uh, could, one, efficiently encode information in a way that resembles biological intelligence, two, enable emergent learning through unconventional weight propagation, and three, compete with standard neural networks in real-world tasks like image recognition and natural language processing. Before I dive into here, so just very simplistically, right, this is our um, base network structure for the Fibonacci neural network. <laughs> and so this is step one, right, um, is, is let me map this out, make sure it works, and, and this is exactly how the, the neural network plays out, right? And then so it's a 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 33, and 336. So up and up, right? Like uh, the Fibonacci sequence. And then so I envision when we transfer this to weights that that's, these are the weighted averages. So the weights would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, et cetera. So instead of that regularization, uh, instead of your weights being like um, 1.0, 0.8, 0.4, 0.8, Six point, et cetera, right? It's they're literally, and they're, we know what they're going to be up front. They're 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 233, and 377. Like, and that's that's our weight, and that's our sequence. And they're going to be connected in this way, which is just the Fibonacci sequence. So we have that cool little circle for the one there, right? Like the cool little uh, mathematical byproduct that comes out of that. Uh, and then we've got our cool uh, kind of like very like uh, powerful uh, connections and, and weights in between 
it, right? And then so from here, uh, we turn it in, into a specific, like, like into a neural network, and I train it, um, and, and it trains. It has that loss function, right? So let me go back up here, and I'll kind of explain to you what these experiments are doing. So, so uh, the main experiments that I do, so I train it on a loss function, and I realize that it works. So let's turn it into a full-blown neural network, right? So experiment number one is uh, I train it on, uh, turn it into a full-blown neural network, and I train it on the uh, fashion MNIST data set. So train, I'm specifically testing for image classification in this instance. And the goal is to determine whether or not a Fibonacci connected neural network can effectively learn visual patterns. So I applied the Fashion MNIST data set, uh, which is a common benchmark for recognizing images of clothing items. And for the architecture, I constructed a Fibonacci based adjacency graph where each neuron's connections follow that Fibonacci recursion. I used this structure as the hidden layer connectivity in place of traditional deep <laughs> network layers. So just part of the, the Fibonacci sequence is, is a hidden layer. I trained the model on the Fashion MNIST data set for 10 epochs and measured both the loss and the classification accuracy, which I'll show you, uh, and then compared the performance again uh, against a, a standard fully connected network uh, FCNN model, which I don't have uh, in this particular notebook and experiment, but I've, I've uh, run that and experimented it before. So we go through and we have our test. And then, so this is our test, right? Uh, this is what was shocking to me is uh, going through, let me show you this this first test here. So uh, loss starts at 0.7322, and then it goes down to 0.4016. Um, and then this is just for five epochs, right? So I just trained it for five epochs, and then we get like a pretty standard loss <laughs> loss curve, right? This would be like what you would expect from any typical neural network. Like this would look very normal, normal and straightforward. Um, but let's go up here, right? So uh, I have my Fibonacci based graph. I turn that graph into a neural network model. I'm essentially just converting the graph uh, into weights. I only have the forward, uh, the, the forward pass over it. Load the fashion MNIST data set. Uh, make sure to translate that to the graph. Load the model so that the, the model can uh, pass information to the graph, utilizing standard optimizer, training for five epochs, standard uh, standard learning. Uh, make sure that I have um, and, and and just uh, run the and display the progression and the loss rate, which we see here. And, and here's the results. Very straightforward, right? Like like as simple as it gets if you know what this is doing. And then so uh, let's take it a step further. I want to know what the actual accuracy is, right? Eighty six percent. It starts off at eighty percent. Like so, I mean, it, like it starts off at, at like if I run this and I compare this to a hypervector, I would expect the hypervector to come out at 0.8059 percent accuracy. But I'd have trouble um, training and fine tuning the hypervector like I can with this Fibonacci sequence neural network. So this is an improvement here, right? Highlighting and pointing that out. And then um, what we can see is very stable um, improvement over time of the training accuracy. Um, and then so this, it does level off here towards the end. So I would be interested in running this maybe for 20, 25 epochs and then see if that leveling off is uh, a pattern or if it actually starts going up again. Um, so there are further experiments that I could do within this. And then second experiment here, is so uh, I want to test this like fully universally, right? Like so, um, the first one is is we did image classification, and at eighty six percent, like I, I am um, am impressed. So let's test uh, natural language processing. Let's let's test uh, NLTK, right? So um, I do, I uh, uh, next experiment is to assess whether the Fibonacci based connectivity can generalize beyond just vision tasks, and then so we'll apply it to a text classification task, analyzing movie reviews from the IMDb sentiment analysis. Analysis data set. So it's either it's a, a classifying into positive or negative, and then so this is a classification test. And then let's uh, go and take a look at the results here. The results honestly just finished executing uh, as I was running this, so I don't know what the results are. Uh, I had to install a few extra packages in order to get this to run, um, including the punct data set. Let me, let me highlight this. So punct is a uh, big here, especially for NLTK. So if you're doing like um, Testing with regards towards uh, text categorization, etc. Punct P U N K T is like your best friend. Punct, punct. You'll you'll use punct like uh, all the time. <laughs> uh, and then so let's go through. Amazing. 
So starts off at 79% accuracy and then ends at 82% accuracy. This loss rate is beautiful to me. Starts off at 0.58, goes down to 0.36. Uh, look here, we have our, our beautiful loss rate there. Um, and then so again, we have the leveling off of accuracy. So like, I mean, we know like this is a functioning uh, like a hypervector, essentially. We get uh, like this is, yeah, this is exactly what I would expect as far as the performance out of a hypervector um, from this Fibonacci sequence graph. So like, again, I mean, this is a graph, right? Like this is, um, like, like uh, this, but it, it, a graph structure, and, and and that's what this is doing. And then so we're just passing these data sets. In this instance, is like the fashion MNIST data set. So it's passing. Here's an image of pants. Here's an image of shoes, etc. Over this, literally, what we're looking at this graph, and the graph is like, yeah, I can I can predict that with eighty percent accuracy. Or we're passing. Um, movie reviews and it's like yeah i can i can predict that with 80 percent accuracy just by doing this or we're passing it over a graph like mind blown right like people under like why does ai fascinate me why do these things fascinate me? this fascinates me i'm literally running data over a graph man <laughs> like i can't uh, like like I, 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 this, if this doesn't fascinate you, I, I, I don't know. Like, um, but so uh, here it is. I'll leave a link to this uh, collab in the description of this video. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe.